Okay, now that we have a basic understanding of how to use static variables in the resource folder, and we have a rudimentary understanding at least of how to use Java's anonymous inner class structure to handle events inside of Android, let's go ahead and uh, use these concepts to build a simple app. What we're going to do here is we're going to build a temperature converter application where we're going to ask the user to enter a decimal number and we're going to take that and assume it's a centigrade temperature and when the user presses a button we're going to convert that to a Fahrenheit temperature and display it on the screen. So I've got my Android Studio application open on my PC and I'm just going to go and start at clicking on the file new project and uh, we're going to call our project uh, temperature converter and we're going to hit next and we're going to leave these alone for now uh, one of the choices you'll have to make when you build your apps is to decide which versions of the Android uh, operating system you're going to support and the higher up you go the more recent the versions the fewer the devices are uh, that the, your app will work on and the lower you go you'll get a larger uh, percentage of devices out there but you won't be able to use uh, more of the latest features. So right now I'm just going to leave these at their default settings. And we're going to start with an empty activity and the main activity is sort of um, what name shall we give it? How about we call it uh, uh, convert 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 temperature activity. Okay so we'll just call it that and we'll hit finish and now I'm gonna pause the video while uh, all the uh, initializations are done okay I'm back now um, Android Studio is a fantastic tool but it really beats on your PC's processor and disk drives so if you have a machine that's several years old and you've been thinking about upgrading uh, this using this application may push you over the edge uh, so we have a fresh activity, uh, excuse me, a fresh project that's been created uh, by Android Studio, and it's created two files for us right now. This one is the Java file, and it's got the onCreate method, which is the method that is run when our app first starts up. And we have this other temp uh, other file called the XML file, which is going to show us uh, a WYSIWYG of our our design uh, layout for what what our app is going to look like. I'm going to start off by coming over here and removing this hello world that's sort of provided as a default because we won't be using that in our app and uh, we're going to now go ahead and design the uh, the layout I'm going to just, just close this window because we're not going to really need that very much and uh, we're going to start taking some widgets from this palette here and dragging them onto our screen our app design is quite simple. We're just going to uh, have a number up here that the user can enter. We're going to have a button uh, that's going to get pressed uh, to start the conversion process and then we're going to reveal the answer on another text field over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a text field. Uh, now I'm going to be using a decimal number so I'm just going to come over here to these text fields and grab the number uh, field over here and put it over there and then uh, I'm going to need a button so I'm going to just grab a regular button here and put it right in the middle somewhere and you can see Android Studio is trying to give me some alignment hints for this application it's not that important and then I'm going to take another a decimal number field and put it uh, at the bottom here so that's basically our entire uh, layout uh, let me just uh, hit the save button periodically as I go through uh, my project so we need to name these things so that we can refer to them in our code. Right now they have the generic names edit text and edit text two for the two number fields and uh, a generic button for the button that we have. So I'm going to change this this first number field up here uh, and call that the uh, the centigrade number field. So I'm going to call it centigrade and I'm going to use the uh, suffix et uh, so that in my code I'll know that it stands for an edit text and I'm gonna do the same thing for this other one and uh, I'm gonna change the name to uh, Farron 
F A H R E N H E I height like that. Hopefully I've spelled that right. Uh, and change that to uh, ET suffix as well. And finally the button. And I'm going to change the ID on the button also. And uh, let's see here. And I'm looking for the ID field. There it is. And I'm going to call it the uh, convert button. So I'll say convert. And I'll put an underscore B at the end to show me that it's a button. And uh, in terms of the text that's going to be on there, we'll just put the word convert like this. And we'll just use all caps. Notice that when I changed it here, it changed automatically in the display. OK, I think we're done with the layout now. And let's switch over to the uh, code view. OK, so I'm going to click on this uh, convert temperature activity Java file. And this is the basic uh, file that's been created uh, for a blank project. And the onCreate method is what's going to get run. This is sort of like your uh, public static void main in your traditional Java program. This is the onCreate method for, for the app. Now, by default, you'll see that the import statements are collapsed here uh, for this uh, project. I'm going to expand them so you can see how Android Studio automatically imports all the necessary libraries as we go. And we're going to need a few uh, tools, uh, a library uh, tools to uh, import into this project, uh, specifically the button, the edit text, and um, the tools designed for handling uh, action listeners. So let me start by creating some static variables, as we saw in our previous tutorial, uh, that is going to allow us to um, connect to the layout items that we had previously uh, designed. Okay, so you see that uh, Android is, uh, Studio is complaining in red here that edit text is uh, not known. So uh, if I just hold down the alternate and hit the enter, you'll see that the import statements will grow by one as it figures out where the edit text uh, library is. Okay, so there you see that it brought it in the brought in the edit text widget. Um, notice also that whereas in the uh, activity code uh, on the layout screen, I referred to the centigrade uh, as uh, centigrade underscore uh, et. Uh, in my uh, code here, uh, I want to use the uh, standard et underscore. So this allows me. Uh, to uh, figure out when I'm looking at a variable, whether it's a layout variable or a Java variable. And this is just a standard that I've introduced into the course. Uh, other teachers might do it differently, but we're going to hold to this standard uh, throughout the course. So once again, if, it, the, 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 if it's a prefix, uh, it has to do with the Java side. And if it's a suffix uh, like this, it has to do with the layout side. OK, I've gone ahead now and created the static variables for the other two layout items that we had, the uh, button field for the uh, conversion button and also the decimal field for the answer that's going to be displayed in Fahrenheit. OK, so what we're going to do is when the onCreate method runs, at the end of that method, we're going to call our own method. So I'm going to call an initialize method like that. Now, you see it's complaining in red because I haven't written this uh, method yet. Uh, some uh, programmers might be tempted to just take all the code for the app and just throw it right into this, uh, inside this onCreate method. But we are not savages, so we're going to try and uh, build smaller, smaller methods with uh, less code in them. So that's why we're going to just uh, separate all the code we're going to write from the code that's supplied automatically by Android Studio. So this will just basically provide a link uh, right into our code. And our method is not going to need any uh, parameters. But what we're going to do in here is we're going to connect now the uh, Java side buttons that we've created and uh, text fields to the uh, layout uh, assets that we have over here so that we can um, manipulate those uh, fields.
Okay, we've now connected the Java side variables to their counterparts uh, on the layout. The next thing we have to do is we have to define an action listener for the convert button. This is the code that's going to execute uh, when the button gets pressed. As we learned in a previous tutorial, we're going to use the preferred method, which is a Java anonymous inner class, to handle the, uh, the button action. Okay, now you see this little red light bulb has shown up indicating uh, a suggestion that Android Studio is making on how to fix this error. By clicking this button here on implement methods, it's going to automatically add the methods that we need for our on-click listener. And this is the anonymous inner class structure that is desired and now inside this on-click method we can put all the code that we want to execute when the button gets pressed. When the convert button on the screen gets pressed, this onclick method is what gets invoked. So what we've done here is we've taken the text that was entered in the centigrade field and we've read it using the getText method and we've converted it into a string and then we parse that string using this static method that's built into the Java double class and we take that uh, decimal number and we store it into this new variable C and then we calculate the, the conversion to F and then we take F and convert it back into a string and display it on the screen. Uh, let's see how our uh, app works now. The, by pressing the green run button on Android Studio I've gotten the app to compile and run and here it's initialized on the emulator so as a reminder I'm going to just put the temperature up here uh, that I want so I'll just go with an easy one like 100.0 and then I'm going to hit the convert button and we see that the uh, answer of 212 shows up over here. So we see that the app is uh, functioning fine. 